we want to look at actually finding oxidation states today. Now, we used this when we did naming and nomenclature and all that good stuff, but we never actually determined those oxidation states. You just took my word for it, you used it off the periodic table, and you're like, woohoo, go me. So we want to actually solve these. So we notice that carbon is variable. We have four hydrogens, which are always a plus one. And the overall charge is zero. So this just becomes x plus four. We want to solve for x. So it says x equals negative four. So your charge on your carbon is a negative four and on your hydrogen is a plus one. So when we look at the next example, we know we're still looking for carbon because it's a variable. We have two hydrogens that are plus one each and we have two chlorines that are minus one each. The overall charge is zero because there's nothing written as a superscript. So this simplifies to x plus two minus two and then we get x equals zero. So that means that our carbon is zero, our hydrogen is plus one, and our chlorine is minus one. So when we come over here, we've got copper. We don't know, it's a transition element. We know that chlorine is a minus one, so we get x minus two equals zero, and we solve for x, so x equals two. I know that a lot of you are probably going, you know, I can just undo those crisscrosses and I can find the answer. And if you want to do that, that's okay. I just want to make sure and show you how it's technically legally done. Now, you notice here I went from just a 2 to a plus 2. You must put the plus sign in order for it to be correct. So now we've got some high going on. I know that H, I'm not really sure I'm supposed to figure it out. I know that I is always a minus 1. So I'm going to get x minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to add one both sides, and I'm going to get that x equals plus 1. Now, as you know, I kind of hesitated too, so if you wanted to just write it out to begin with, I'm okay with that. No problem. 